What I've got right here is the Sony A6000 and on the front is the standard 16-50 f3.5 to f5.6 kit lens. Now this entire setup cost me less than £300 which does make it kind of ideal for someone who's just starting out in photography and maybe on a bit of a tight budget but the big question is can you take good photos with it? Well to find out we're going to take this setup down in London and we're going to do a spot of street photography with it. Now I will admit it is going to be a little more challenging to get great photographs with this setup because a kit lens isn't the best lens in the world it's actually probably one of the worst but I fully believe that great equipment doesn't always equate to great photography. It's always about the person behind the camera who uses their skill set, their creativity, and a bit of imagination to take great photographs. And that is what I want to share with you in today's video. Now, before we begin, all the photography you're going to see in today's POV have been edited with my preset packs. Now, if you'd like to check these out for yourself, I'll leave a link for them in the description below. All right, so we have got an iconic photo spot right here. I'm shooting this with the kit lens on the A6000. I'm shooting this at f3.5, 150 for a second. Look at that shot right there. ISO 1000. Oh, that is looking so good. I'm okay, so we're now at 130 for a second, f4.5, ISO 1600. Oh, wow. That is looking amazing. And it's being shot on a kit lens. I will repeat, it is being shot on a kit lens. And that is the photograph we've got right there. Oh, that gentleman crossing the road looked pretty cool actually. That weren't bad. Uh, taxi here, maybe. Um, leading line, maybe. Getting the people getting out the taxi, which looked, cool, looked, looked pretty good. I right, got a bit of a wider perspective right here, which is looking pretty good at 16 mil. And then maybe we can zoom all the way in at 50 and step a bit further back. Soon get the taxi driver here. Ooh, ooh. I think that might have been the first shot of a person today, or second, or third, one of the two. All right, that was actually an all right composite, you know, at 50 mil with the 16 to 50. We've got a cool gentleman in a hat here. I want to see if we can photograph him. Maybe got one or two shots of him. I was trying to get him on the own, but there was a subject behind him, but actually it kind of worked better having a subject behind him because they were almost like mimicking each other's movements that's actually really cool all right nice let's take a photo yes how are you doing today hang on oh awesome yes a couple more hey thanks mate have a good day take care <laughs> Awesome! <laughs> right, instead of getting a straight on shot of the Chinatown sign there, what I'm going to do is introduce some foreground into it, this bike here. So I'm shooting this at about two and a half thousand for the second shutter speed, ISO 200. And we're getting that frame right there, which is actually looking pretty gnarly, actually. Oh, actually, look at that with the foreground. Look how much more interest that gives us to the frame. Ooh, did I get that? Oh, I think I got that. Did I nail that? Please say I nailed that. Oh, I fucking nailed that. Look at that. That's from a kit lens. What really sells that frame for me is you've got him in the center who looks a little bit lost, but then you've got the road close sign, the diversion sign, and it kind of just tells a bit of a story that he's a bit lost and doesn't know where to go. <laughs> and I like that. Oh, maybe we've got this guy here coming towards me. Focus like that. Nice. Nice. Let's get a low angle shot here, this gentleman. Oh, no fucking way. No way. Oh, it might have been a little bit overexposed, just a smidge, but I might be able to recover that. But still, guys, look at that frame there. I'm sorry, that is actually bad. Oh, another good low angle perspective right there. Look, I'm loving the low angle perspectives today. Like, that looks so good as well. So this time, got my composition ready. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's on, mate. Oh, look at that, yes. Nice low angle here. And nice and wide as well. Oh, perfect, that's a brilliant shot right there got a really cool shot here all the way out at 16 mil look at that we've got the top of the building a person at the bottom of the frame it's all there it's all there nicely packaged and contained in one photograph 
Ooh, that was a good shot there. That was pretty good. Get this gentleman walking out here into the sunlight, or oh, sunlight, I say, the uh, into the highlights more. I'm gonna try and get a photo of this gentleman right here. Oh, yes, just like that. I think that was a little bit underexposed, but we can work with that. Oh, we can definitely work with that. That's a very cool shot there. Nice shadow work here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, look at that shadow work there. Hello. That's some good shadowness. Shadowness, well, that doesn't sound make sense. Shadow stuff here. We're getting that shot right there. So, everybody, and I think that's a pretty nice shot there. Um, what I do like is how the shadows are looking now on the floor. Oh, that one's a good one. That's a really quick fire shot there. Diversion as he walks towards the sign, like following the directions it's saying. That's a very good actually shot. I need a couple more of them. That one. That one. The arrow pointing at her. <laughs> That's cool. Got some nice flaring going on here. Nice shadow work as well. Ooh. All right. We've got a rather interesting composition here. Oh, we got some of the trolley going through it. Oh, look at that. This like W sign here. You've been able to nail a right shot there. Look at that framing. Hello. Take a photo, buddy. Yeah. How are you doing today? Not bad. Not bad? Busy? No, <laughs> it's busy for me. I'm from a village, <laughs> so this is mental to me. <laughs> Have a good day, buddy. Take care. So the video you're seeing right now is a time lapse because I accidentally went into time lapse mode and recorded this video. But the photo we were able to get during this time lapse was insane. We've got a very cool Mercedes here, and the composition we've got right here as well actually works very nicely with it. We go a little bit lower down. I like the way I'm photographing the Mercedes over a Porsche right here. It's kind of funny actually, but the Mercedes kind of a kind of a different kind of subject. I mean, look at that. That's a classic right there. I don't even know which one that is, but I've never seen one of them before. I can get a really cool shot of the Mercedes here. Doing a bit of car photography with a kit lens. Why not, eh? So a shot here. Go a bit further up for it. Oh yeah. Focus on them details right there. Oh, that is a gorgeous detail shot right there. Nice. And then maybe focus through the back window to get the uh, steering wheel right here. Shoot in the center, center focus point. I'm gonna get a photo right here of this person holding the balloons with a big Ben in the background. Oh, brilliant. That's a good shot right there. All right, so this is always a great photo spot here. So I've set the focus point to a spot mode and I put it on lower third of the frame. So we're avoiding getting the pink sign in. I'm shooting at one one thousandth of a second, uh, F5.6 ISO 320. Boom. Oh, if we can get this before anyone goes up the stairs, this is gonna be so sick. Oh yeah, a bit of yellow on yellow action. Thanks buddy. <laughs> Have a good day now. <laughs> Ah, oh, legend, that guy was waiting for me to set my photograph, but come on, look at that yellow on yellow, the leading lines and everything. Oh, that is sick. Get a little bit of creativity in this frame here. Bring up the shutter speed a bit. Keep it F5.6, ISO 100. Ooh, look at that framing. Look at that frame in there. Nice. Oh, this is a cool shot, this light here. All right, that's pretty bad. I'd Punch all the way in at 50 mil, bring down the shutter speed. And I'm gonna take that photo there. Oh, also get someone walking through the frame, give it a bit of scale. Use the silhouettes, give it scale, add all of it together. Here's a really sick angle down here, right? What we're gonna do is use this right here as a reflection, and then what we can do is get St. Paul's reflected in the glass. Look at that. That is actually rad. So we're now going to get a brilliant look-up shot right here, shooting at 16 mil. I'm at 1 3 20 second F5 ISO 100, pointing just directly up to nail. And I mean truly nail that shot right there. That is just sick. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, it's so, so cool. We've got a brilliant shot here, leading line to St. Paul's Cathedral. So what I'm going to do, go nice and low down, use the yellow lines as a bit of a leading line down here. Shooting at f5.6, 1 200th of a second, ISO 100. Grabbing ourselves that photo there, but. 
How about just getting this person a boner? Yes, look at that photo there. We got some flaring going on as well, which is looking pretty rad. Right, let's see, can we get someone? Ooh. Oh, I don't know if I missed him. I think I missed him. And I don't think I was exposed correctly at all. Oh no, did I grab him? Oh no, I think I got him. Okay, you might have noticed from my high-pitched tone that I think I got him. That was a bit of a voice crack there. Could be a cool shot here. Got some cool shadows going on. Oh, I reckon I'll be able to put like some radial filters and gradient filters in that to really bring out and add some like sun flares in that. How about this gentleman here? Oh, hello. I don't know if I just nailed that gentleman. I just turned around and took a photograph and I think I actually just accidentally nailed a shot. <laughs> but I love it when it happens. You just, oops, I just did that. <laughs> oops, I created art. <laughs> right here, we have got some incredible shadow work going on because of the harsh sunlight behind. So I just need to wait and hopefully get some good photos of subjects. So I'm gonna chill about here center focus point boom there's our first one not bad good start let's chill for our next subject not bad but i want them coming the other way because the shadows work better that way maybe chill at a different angle i don't know i'm gonna try a different perspective oh that's a oh that's a brilliant perspective right there okay this might be it oh that was an all right one there Yes, yes. Oh, flip, yes, yes. I think I got that one. Okay, sort of, sort of, sort of. All right, we have got an amazing shot right here. Look at this. I have never come across this before in London. How have I never seen this before? This is insane. I wonder if we'll be able to do anything with the uh, reflection down here. Oh, fuck. We can. Holy... Oh, my goodness. We, we, we really can. <laughs> hey. Hello. We've got ourselves a bit of a reflection here. All right, so we are losing daylight now. And that means we are going to have to bump up the ISO quite a bit more on the A6000. But that's going to give us a good chance to see how good it is with those higher ISO numbers. But at the moment, I'm around the business district and I'm getting some really cool looking up shots right here. This is a classic shot right here, but 16 mil with a 16 to 50, this is gonna be sick. Look at this lockup shot. F3.5 at 1320 for a second, ISO 640. Oh, that is locking the looks right there. Got another great leading line shot here with the yellow lines to the walkie talkie building back there. Using a center focus point, F3.5. 1 800 for a second can definitely bring that down to bring down the ISO massively. Okay, maybe to about there. Of course, right here we have got a classic lock up shot. I, I think I take this photograph every time I come to London because I always just say it's a good way of testing out a lens. It's, it, it is, but it's also just because I really like this photograph and I like to take it every single time. But with the kit lens, Ooh, especially at this time of night as well. We're getting that nice blue magic. Are you ready for a good shot? Well, good, because look at this. 130 for a second, F5.6, ISO 640, with a kit lens, delivering the sauce. All right, so you're definitely not gonna be able to see what I'm doing up here, but I've got a brilliantly composed shot at about 24 mil. Oh, and we've got the lamppost in the shot. And then we've got Tower Bridge itself. Oh, the composition on that was nailed. Oh, this setup, this little setup has been a lot of fun to work with and play around with today. So I've got my little tripod set up and we're going to do a bit of a long exposure photo here. So I've got this set up at about five seconds, F10, ISO 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a two second timer. So when I press the shut on it, it'll wait two seconds, then take the photograph and that'll remove any jitters. Ooh, and the results are good. Ooh I'm going to say it again. Kit lens. All right, so we're now going to take a long exposure shot of Tower Bridge. I'm at 8 seconds, F11, ISO 100. Now, the reason I'm at F11 is F11 is typically the sharpest point in terms of aperture with most lenses. So that's going to give us the best chance of getting the sharpest images with the kit lens. And this image has now been taken. And let's have a look at the results. Ooh. 
my goodness i don't know what that noise was but it was excitement and that is an amazing shot oh a tower bridge delivering the a6000 delivering this lens delivering that is that is gnarly uh, all right this shot right here should be gnarly we're at 3.2 second exposure f11 iso 200 nicely focused on the shroud right there and this should act as a leading line bringing our eye in and this should be the result <laughs> you are a beauty that photo is beautiful so that is where i'm going to be leaving today's pov with the sony a6000 using just a kit lens in the city of london i think we were able to get some great photos with this combo but i think the last thing we should do in today's video is have a look for the hashtag curtis padley and see what you guys have been creating i will admit something coming into this video i was very skeptical on the photography i'd be able to achieve with this setup however i think that is some of the best street photography i have done and it's been done with a setup that costs less than £300. Now, I think the reason for this is because the limitations of this setup have presented new opportunities to be expressive with street photography. And sometimes those limitations give you a barrier to overcome, which in turn actually makes you more creative. So is this a setup I would recommend to someone who's just getting started in photography? Absolutely. It is gonna have its limitations, but it's also gonna teach you so much about photography. So the final thing to do today is have a look for the hashtag Curtis Padley to see what you guys have been creating. And the first photograph we're gonna have a look at today is this amazing look up shot i took this exact photograph down in london by kev pesk this is a brilliant shot and i really like the vibe in black and white that looks good i also like this as well like the opposite direction kind of thing with the sign i kind of did something similar in chinatown this one by memories and moments in pics brilliant composition some motorsport action here by henry thomas photography i like this a whole like carousel effect you've got going on here and all oh, that mclaren is nice i think i've taken a photo of that exact mclaren in donnerton park brilliant photographs a lot of action and this photograph right here by frenzy's frames in singapore of this beautiful red mclaren the foreground the background the composition of the car all the rollers as well these are killer shots. Oh, the framing on this by Antonio. Wow. Uh, someone banging out a brilliant frame of St. Paul's Cathedral here. This one by With Micro. Love the use of the leading line on the bridge. And our final shot today is by It's Leon Simpson of this brilliant light painting with this car. The bridge in the background. Absolutely exceptional photographs right here. The creativity man is off the chain. So that's where I'm going to be leaving today's video with the Sony a6000 and the standard kit lens. Now if you're looking at getting started in photography in 2024 but don't know where to begin or what equipment you should buy then definitely check out this top video right here or if you want to see a night POV with the Sony a6700 then definitely check out this bottom video right here. 